Hello to all friends and fans of the pulp, paper and bioproducts industry. Welcome to our exciting Spectrum podcast, where today we will be looking a little bit outside of the pulp and paper industry, and we'll be talking about Andrit's latest technologies and solutions for decarbonization, including the very hot topic of carbon capture, utilization and storage. I am Mark Rushton, and I will be your host. You don't often hear about the good news going on in large industries. Very often it's about how much damage is being done to the environment. But there is an enormous amount of work being carried out by companies like Andritz to achieve the target set to alleviate climate change. Together with its customers, Andritz is stepping up its activities to use technologies to reduce carbon dioxide emissions. All these solutions developed feature highly efficient and well-integrated energy cycles, especially for industrial customers, as well as a delivery of CO2 at the required purity and pressure. Historically, Andritz already has enormous experience in this area, which is uh, why we're going to talk to some experts in this podcast. So we would like to welcome Andritz experts Harold Reisner, Division Manager, Air Pollution Control, and Klaus Bienthaler, Vice President, Air Pollution Control. Yeah, I appreciate Mark being here in the podcast. Yes, hello. Good to be here. So first of all, let's get a bit of background. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, the air pollution control division in Andritz and why it's so important as a division when it comes to carbon capture? And can you give us a brief historical background since when and why Andritz has been involved in these areas? Um, Harold, can we speak to you first, please? Well, uh, Andritz has a long history going back more than 100 years in air quality control activities. Um, it all started with the dusting of uh, flue gases from boilers and industrial sources with cyclones and electrostatic precipitators. And um, we expanded our products during our uh, time, uh, depending on requirements brought up by the society and law. Um, I think one important development was to clean it acid gases. Well known is SO2, causing acid rain and destroying the forests in the 70s and 80s. Later, we developed solutions to treat organic components like dioxins and forens um, or NOx uh, emissions. And uh, we are active in all Andritz core industries and cooperating with our colleagues in Andritz in their business lines to fulfill our mission clean air for a better planet. And most important today is climate change mitigation measures. And uh, we are focusing on solutions uh, for uh, CO2 capture, carbon capture. And um, the business of our division is, of course, mainly driven by requirements defined by law, regulations, uh, where our industries have to comply with, and therefore carbon capture has actually our main attention. I think about we, when we started with our business, uh, this goes back more than 15 years. So um, our first activities on carbon capture, utilization and storage were solutions which we tested in cooperation with universities and other scientific uh, entities. And uh, our first approach was more or less the development of solutions for the fossil fuel power industry, uh, where we have installed uh, pilot plants, uh, demonstration plants, which we operated for nearly 10 years. And this gave us, of course, experience to move then uh, into other industries. And uh, when there was this definition of a net zero emission target in 2050 uh, for CO2, uh, for all of the global emitters, it was clear for us that such targets can be only reached by also considering carbon capture technologies. Mm. So there's a lot of experience already there of carbon capture. That's that's correct. So I think we are dealing with this stuff for more than 15 years. Excellent. Great. Um, so moving on, um, Klaus, can you tell us what industries Andritz has been involved in already in the activity of carbon capture, utilization and storage, or let's call it CCUS uh, from now, as it's increasingly been known? Yeah, we have a clear focus to the industry, especially to the industries who cannot avoid the emission of CO2. And so where carbon capture is obligatory to need to meet the net zero emission target by 2050. So what are these industries? This is iron and steel. Iron and steel is the 
largest emitter of CO2 currently. We're talking about 2.6 billion tons per year of CO2 emitted by iron and steel. So this counts up to around 7%. And the target of iron and steel industry is to change the steel making or iron and steel making process using hydrogen. But frankly speaking, it will take years that enough hydrogen is available to do it. So there must be something in between, and this can be carbon capture. And what we are currently doing there, we are pro providing several proposals, and we are operating one pilot plant at the first turbine in Linz in Austria, where the exhaust gas uh, from the blast furnace boiler is used, uh, and where we're removing CO2 from this exhaust gas. Second industry is cement. The CO2 comes from the cement making process itself. So we're using calcium carbonate and the CO2 from the carbonate is released. So there you cannot avoid the emission of CO2. And therefore also there to meet this net zero emission target, you need carbon capture technologies. And both these industries, iron and steel and cement, they are emitting non-biogenic CO2. So it came from the mineral. So the usage of this CO2 is maybe not uh, really possible. No? So you have to go for sequestration, for underground storage, or you can store it uh, in chemicals, in plastics, or also in building materials. So that is for long time stored there. No? And then we are following other industries like pulp and paper or biomass, where you have biogenic CO2 sources. No? The CO2 comes from biomass. And so to remove the CO2 from these sources, you have the great possibility to use it as a raw material, what we are investigating. And what you also can do is you can remove it, go for sequestration, and then you have a negative CO2 emission. So you can remove the CO2 from the process itself. And then together with waste to energy, these are the five industries where we are busy and where we are already currently working. Wow, this is fascinating, really fascinating. So um, a lot of our listeners uh, are coming from uh, these industries, um, but can you enlarge a, a little bit more on, uh, on CCUS in a large modern pulp mill? How would that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I already mentioned the CO2 from the pulp mill is biogenic, no? So a valuable raw material, and we can capture it after the recovery boiler, or we can capture it from the exhaust gas of the lime kiln. No? How we are doing this capturing? So the technology we are using is the chemical absorption using amines. Amines, they have the ability to remove the CO2 at low temperatures, so to absorb the CO2 from the exhaust gas, into desorbies, so to release it at high temperatures. And with this principle, we can produce CO2 with a high grade after this process, and then it can be directly used or further treated to make it more pure. Um, and what are we doing now in the, in the pulp and paper industries? On the one hand, this captured CO2 can be used in the pulp mill itself. For example, it will be injected into black liquor to precipitate lignin. And lignin is a valuable raw material for the industries. For example, you can produce polymers, you can produce bioasphalts, you can produce biofibers. So there are many activities ongoing in this lignin recovery. And for that, you need the CO2, what we can capture at the pulp mill. And the other topic already mentioned is to have this biogenic CO2 available for production of valuable product like uh, synthetic fuels called e-fuels, sustainable aviation fuel like that. So, and there are many, many activities ongoing and a lot of requests for quotations coming to us from the pulp and paper industry. Okay, fascinating. Uh, are there any actual development projects already going on in the pulp and paper industry that you're aware of? Yes, uh, as mentioned, we are in contact with uh, several pulp mills. And for example, also with a very well-known Swedish pulp and paper company. So we are preparing for them, we are offering for them this lignin recovery uh, technology together with our colleagues in, in other divisions of Andritz. 
And uh, on the other hand, we are also developing projects to produce uh, e-fuels because you have to consider um, the pulp mills are the main source for biogenic CO2. There are not so many sources available. We really get the CO2 uh, from biogenic sources of burning uh, using wood for pulp production. So this is really a valuable product and we are working on that with hundreds. Excellent. So with CCUS, not only are you capturing CO2, you're also enabling a possible side stream and revenue opportunity by utilizing the captured emissions. Can you explain this a little bit further, Harold? Yes, a very good question. Uh, on the short term, of course, the storage of captured CO2 will be the most important application to reduce the CO2 emission to the atmosphere. But as an innovative and technology-driven company, uh, and this approach to sustainable solutions doesn't end with this capturing step alone. Andritz has solutions for hydrogen production, and uh, we are developing synthesis options of green hydrogen and the captured CO2 to produce e-fuels or other valuable chemicals. Furthermore, there are integrated solutions in the pulp and paper or metals industry, where CO2 can be used in a closed cycle process as a potential carrier chemical. And I think these applications, besides the storage, uh, we see as very important, um, but they are, of course, more or less mid- and long-term options. Uh, but we are spending here a lot of, let's say, effort to uh, make this technology uh, available for the industry. Okay, excellent. Um, it sounds like it could be expensive technology. Can you um, please uh, talk a little bit around about the ROI on the technology installed? Uh, what What is in it for the customer? Yeah, you're right. Finally, it's all about the money. And uh, I think for CCS project in Europe, the major revenue or income will come from certificates sold in the European emission trading system. Uh, I think there are similar systems available in other regions of the world. And uh, as you may know, the share prices for CO2 developed uh, very favorable in the last years. So they reached in the meantime values between 90 and 100 euro per ton. And uh, latest forecasts for capture, transportation and storage costs, uh, depending on industries, regions and other boundary conditions, start from 60 euro per ton to 150 euro per ton. This means for individual projects, the ROI shows already values of around 8 to 10 years. Um, others are still in the 15 to 18 years, uh, which means, of course, for these projects, there is a need for funding and um, funding is available, not only in Europe, but also in the US. So there are a lot of programs available to support these technologies. And furthermore, due to the reduction of available certificates in Europe and similar measures in other regions, it is expected that the CO2 share price will increase to values beyond 150 euros per ton, which will definitely then improve the ROI numbers. Hmm. Great. Thank you very much for that. Um, um, very, very interesting subject for lots of industries, and uh, including the pulp and paper industry, which is good news. So um, can you give us a real-life example of capture and utilization of CO2 in action? Um, Klaus, can we go to you? Yes, maybe um, the best example what we can give is our showcase what we built in Rohrdorf at the cement factory. It was around two years ago when we got the order to build there a carbon capture plant to remove CO2, so to remove two tons per day CO2 from the exhaust gas of the, of the cement kiln. So we are taking uh, a side stream from the exhaust gas and leading it to our amine chemical absorption um, plant where we remove the CO2. And um, this CO2 is removed and compressed to 60 to 80 bars and then stored in, in pressurized bundles. And it is available for further usage. No? There are initiatives ongoing to use this CO2 in the nearby chemical industry. And what we are currently doing is we are um, improving the quality of the CO2 so that it has food-grade quality. 
because in the surrounding areas, there are, there are chemical industries, there are, there are beverage industry, which have a high interest in this CO2. And it's, for example, in Bavaria, it's very important, the breweries. And in the last year, there was a lack of CO2 available on the market, food grade. So we are really developing here now solution to have the high quality CO2 available. For the cement plant uh, in Rohrdorf, this plant is a first step no, in their strategy to become CO2 neutral. And then the end of the day, the plant is to install a carbon capture plant, capturing not just two tons per day, but capturing 1,500 tons per day. And also the, uh, this investigation is ongoing. We are also uh, developing these projects. But just to have in mind, what does it mean to remove 1,500 tons and what to do with that? No? To 1,500 tons, if you put it into a train, it will be one full train per day with around 12 wagons full with CO2, what you have to transport. So you see, thinking the, in the long term, there are a lot of initiatives, investments necessary for transportation. No? We cannot transport all the CO2 with trains or with trucks. At the end of the day, we need pipelines. So there is a request that the infrastructure is developed. And also, you need this transportation if you use it in the industries, if you use it for utilization. So capturing is just one part, but then infrastructure utilization are topics to be developed. And yeah, this is a need to come to the net zero emission target in 2050. Wow, fascinating, really fascinating. Um, Harold, would you like to make any final comments? Yeah, thanks. Um, I think uh, what we heard today in this, uh, in this session shows that uh, carbon capture, utilization and storage is definitely a very important topic for the future. Um, the journey starts today, first commercial projects are being awarded within this year and uh, UNRITS is very well prepared to be part of this very interesting journey. Excellent, excellent, great. In conclusion, uh, clearly all the talk about carbon capture is, is not just hot air, uh, or should we say hot CO2 emissions. Um, there are now palpable, measurable, successful results being applied in various industries, including the pulp and paper industries. And Andritz is now seen as a keen and experienced solution provider of technology in this vital area of ways in mitigating climate change. Um, so uh, you can find out more information about the Andritz carbon capture, utilization and storage solutions on our website. And as always, you can find the link in the show notes of this episode. Um, I would like to thank our guests, Harold and Klaus, for joining us in this very interesting discussion. Thanks. Thank you. Goodbye. Thanks and goodbye.